Minnesota was solid last year in in a pretty tough Big Ten where teams beat up on each other. But nine and eleven was was not a bad season. They they keep some talent, lose some guys, but definitely bring in a haul from the transfer portal. So it'll be interesting to see how this roster comes together around Dawson Garcia. Christian and Nick here with Tony Lieber, who covers Minnesota for Bring Me the News. And Tony, tell us what you've been hearing about this roster and in this you know Big Ten that's that's now eighteen schools. Um, what is the optimism that this team can can finish in the top half? Yeah, um, they had a kind of chaotic off season. Um, it, if you're a Gophers fan, it's hard to find a whole lot of optimism because kind of all the players that had momentum last year, like Pharrell Payne, Cam Christie, Elijah Hawkins. Cam Christie's in the NBA. Elijah Hawkins is at Texas Tech. Pharrell Payne's at Texas A&M. Um, so. They kind of got hit hard by the transfer portal, but I do think uh, Ben Johnson did a good good enough job with the hand that he was dealt um, to have enough talent on this team to compete this year. Um, but there's still a lot of questions. I, I mean, there's – outside of Dawson Garcia, there's not a whole lot of returning talent. Uh, Mike Mitchell Jr. is a talented combo guard that'll be kind of a leader in the backcourt this year. But uh, there's a lot of questions to be answered early in this season. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> I'm happy you hit on Dawson Garcia and Mike Mitchell returning because, you know, Mike Mitchell was a proven shooter. I mean, the guy's a sniper. He shot 39% plus from three the last three seasons with 50 plus makes. So that's a good volume. Dawson Garcia, arguably, if the wins are there this season, can be, you know, first team all conference guy easily, in my opinion. Um, so not a lot of returns besides those two guys and, and Parker Fox, really. Um, but but like Chris mentioned, they, they they get active in the portal. Um, they brought in Tyler Cocker and Femi Odakale, Frank Mitchell, Lucy Patterson, Brendan Rigsby, Trey Edmonds. Um, so let's just talk, kind of talk about those portal ads and, and what they bring to the team this season. Yeah, I, I think the biggest questions in the backcourt, like you mentioned, if this team wins, I think Dasa Garcia's – um, definitely a top five player in the conference. And I think he's performed at that level. There just haven't been the wins for him to get that recognition. Um, so the front court's going to be competitive. Uh, Frank Mitchell, I think, I don't know if he's at the same level as Pharrell Payne, but he's at least like, in my opinion, like 80% of the player. And he has the potential to, I guess, kind of fill that role that Payne had last year. But yeah, in the backcourt, uh, Lakai Patterson from Charlotte um, is – a talent player, he was an all-conference guy in the American last year. Uh, Tyler Cochran, um, he was an all-conference guy in the MAC. I think he was uh, Defensive Player of the Year in the MAC last season. And I, I think the the ceiling of this team kind of hinges on the backcourt. Uh, Mitchell returns, and I personally don't think he's a true point guard. Um, he kind of did that when he was at Pepperdine, but uh, last year his – Decision-making and facilitating isn't exactly what you want from the point guard position. So, uh, and Lakai Patterson really wasn't a true point guard either, and Tyler Cochran wasn't either. They're kind of all the same position, and I, that's the biggest question is if they're going to lean on having a true point guard because Elijah Hawkins was that last year. He was second in the country in assists, and – Ben Johnson and his staff are going to have to figure out how they want to use those three players because those are definitely their top three uh, guards this year. And however they figure out how to rotate them, I think is going to be what kind of determines the ceiling of this team. So when I look at this portal class, I see a lot of vets, a lot of, a lot of older players, right? Like, I mean, this entire roster is, is really old. Um, a guy like Brennan Rigsby, I thought was – really good at times at Oregon, had some had some pop. And um, a guy like Femi Udakale has bounced around a lot from, from Pitt, Seton Hall, New Mexico State. It's a challenge to bring in so many guys, right? And something that, that I think of um, is is leadership. Is I, I assume Dawson Garcia is the leader, a guy who bounced around himself um, before finding a home at Minnesota. How is is he that leader? And, and what can you say about the way that – all of these new personalities and, and egos are all trying to mesh here uh, before the season starts. Yeah, uh, Dawson Garcia and Parker Fox, I would say, are the clear leaders of this team. Uh, Parker Fox, he's like 25 years old now, I think. <laughs> it's his sixth or seventh year in college. But uh, 
that's, I guess, what you get with the last year of the COVID uh, extra year of eligibility. But, yeah, both uh, Fox and Garcia, they are from Minnesota, played high school basketball in Minnesota, um, grew up Gophers fans. And I this offseason, I can kind of tell that they've taken on uh, the leadership role, doing a lot of stuff off the court. And they'll definitely be the leaders on the team on the court. Um, and I think based on some of the early metrics, I think the Gophers are like in the top 10 with experience and like average age of the players on their team. Cause um, like you mentioned, all of those portal guys, this is their last year of eligibility, except for Frank Mitchell. I think he's a true junior. Um, but yeah, the main contributors on this team up and down are 21, 22 years old with Fox, like, 24, 25. Um, so there's going to be a lot of experience on this team, and I think that's their biggest strength. It's just the question of how soon they're going to be able to mesh because there's uh, Garcia, Fox, and Mitchell return after having big roles last year. But outside of that, it's almost solely a portal team. Um, you mentioned Femi Otakale. I think he's going to fit the role that Cam Christie kind of had last year, in my opinion, um, kind of that – he can play the two. He can even facilitate at times, but he's going to probably be more of the three based on the personnel that this team has. And like I mentioned, those three guards that I expect to be at the top, uh, Brennan Rigsby, like you mentioned, I think he'll kind of be the seventh, eighth guy on the team off the bench. Um, but it's just the interesting strategy they took with the portal is they have four or five guys on the team that are like six, two and not a true point guard. And that was my I, – I thought they brought in a lot of talent, which at a program like Minnesota should be the number one thing. Uh, you just bring in talent and then figure it out later. But there's just not a true point guard on the team except for um, – inc incoming true freshman Isaac Asuma is probably that, but I don't know if he'll be able to contribute as a true freshman. He played at a uh, really small school in Minnesota last year, um, the second to lowest – uh, level of high school hoops in Minnesota. So I, I don't know if he's going to be able to contribute in the Big Ten right away, but he's probably the only true point guard on the whole roster. Yeah, I, I, I like what Ben Johnson did in the portal. And he brought in, like, big, stocky guards. So the on-ball pressure defensively should be really strong. I guess my issue is, like, Frank Mitchell is a great rebounder. He was the second rebound rate, I believe, in the country last season, Canisius, but – you know, I, I, I fear that the interior defense is going to be an issue, especially in the Big Ten with, with so many good bigs. Um, do you see that being an issue? And, and, and kind of like how do you work around that? Yeah, I, that's a good question because uh, Pharrell Payne was a uh, – he was kind of an up-and-down defender, but he was – at his best, he was a pretty good defender last year. And uh, Frank Mitchell – kind of has a unique skill set. Like, he is a really big dude, uh, but he's kind of undersized to play the five. I guess there's no longer any more, like, Zach Eady in the Big Ten, but, um, like, he's probably, like, 6'9", 6'10", uh, Dawson Garcia around that same size. And the, the team gets more versatile playing Dawson Garcia at the five. And in the Big Ten – Against some of those bigs, a uh, team like Indiana, I don't think Dawson Garcia will be able to match up with, like, Umar Ballo. But um, it, it'll be interesting because since Ben Johnson's came to Minnesota, he's definitely shown the willingness to uh, get versatile with his lineups. He tries a lot of new stuff early in the year. And I, I, I don't know how much we'll talk about the schedule, but the way that it kind of plays out in the non-conference for the Gophers, they don't really have many – tough tests. So I think that's kind of what their strategy was, that they're going to be able to try a lot of new things in the non-conference. Uh, they don't have a true road game until Big Ten play, and they only play potentially one team in the uh, Power Five now, including the Big East. Um, so they'll have the opportunity to try a lot of things. Uh, Frank Mitchell, Dawson Garcia will be the starting front court. I'm pretty confident in that. Uh, Parker Fox has shown versatility, and I think he'll be the first big off the bench. And then uh, they brought in Trey Edmonds from uh, UTSA, who's a talented big man, um, I, not very skilled offensively, but he could very well be their best defender. 
So if they struggle um, against some of those bigs in the Big Ten, they could maybe bring Trey Edmonds on a little bit more. Um, but th there's still a lot of questions with the rotation. So I think early in non-conference play, we'll see a lot about that. But I, I kind of agree with you that there could be some questions uh, with – uh, defending in the in the paint. Well, when you when you bring up that matchup with Indiana, if with a guy like Omar Ballo, so do you expect Edmonds to play a lot more in that game? Is that more of a are we fronting in the post a bit? Or are are we hard doubling like, or is it kind of like the Illinois strategy of we're just going to spread out and we know we're sacrificing the defensive end, but we're gonna we're gonna outscore you. We're gonna be an offensive minded team. Yeah, because I I think that's what's interesting with this team. They could almost go with like a, like a Baylor in 2020, like three guard lineup with uh, Patterson, Mitchell, and Cochran, um, and then play maybe Odukale at the four. That that might be a little tough. But then Garcia at the five, and they could try to just outrun people. And I think they have the personnel to do that. But uh, like you mentioned, against a team like Indiana, you might have to rely more on Mitchell and Edmonds to defend them. And I, I don't know if Mitchell has the, the the skill to defend a big that's taller than him. Because, like I said, he's like 6'9", 6'10", follows like a true 7'1". Seven seven um, and that's the questions that are going to be answered. Because, I mean, I, I went to one practice, and Mitchell's a physically imposing guy, but he's definitely – he's built more mm -hmm. like a – defensive tackle than like a uh center in the big 10 um because he, he is a little under set but Pharrell Payne was kind of the same thing he, super explosive athlete but um at, at any level of basketball you can kind of tell that sometimes when you're just lacking the, the height it, you struggle against bigger players offensively so that'll be something I think we'll figure out early in the year but they'll have to figure it out before they Face teams like Indiana. A guy like uh, Femi Udukale, you mentioned his versatility of playing him at, at at least probably the three, potentially even even more. But he played a lot of point guard, too. And when I look at, uh, you know, Minnesota stylistically, ninth in assist percentage two years ago, fourth last year. And I understand you had guys like Elijah Hawkins and Talon Cooper. But, you know, you talked at the beginning of this call, of, there's not really a pure point guard. So is it kind of – do you think that – stylistically this will be a team that is zipping that ball around and moving a lot because you have so many guards that are everyone's kind of averaging a couple assists per game versus it being one guy with six or seven it, like is that something ben johnson wants to play away with the ball zipping around like that or just personnel wise has he just had those guys like hawkins and cooper that led to those numbers do you think yeah i i think that'll be kind of if this team like unlocks their full potential and they're competitive in the big 10 i think it's going to be leaning on that versatility um because last year cam christie early in the year played a lot of point guard which uh looking back is kind of weird because he's just not a true point guard um he's more of like a two or a three and i think otakala has a similar skill set in that uh aspect so i i think he could facilitate a lot and run the offense depending on lineups that they use. And I, I fully expect, I think three or four guys on this team are going to average like three assists a game. And I don't think there's going to be an Elijah Hawkins that averages seven or uh, whatever he was at last year. Um, I, I, that's a personnel thing. I think Cooper and Elijah Hawkins were two of the best facilitators in the country. And I don't think, uh, this team has a player like that. So, um, it, like, like I mentioned a couple times too, I think Ben Johnson's shown the willingness to be flexible with how he wants to play. And I, I think that's the most interesting aspect of this team is they have the personnel to go in like a lot of different directions. And I, I think that's kind of what they're going to try to do early in the year. Um, with such a weak non-conference schedule. Yeah, you, you mentioned a few minutes ago, you said the word outrun. Chris had mentioned setting the ball around. You just said again, like, they can go in different directions. It, and I want to know if this question would be smart for Minnesota to do. Uh, ben Johnson, average tempo of Minnesota last three seasons was 265. 
but he slightly upticked it every season. They were 280 year one, 260 year two, 240 year three. Do you think with, you know, better on ball guards, do you think that pressuring and, and speeding up the game and, and playing a faster tempo would be ideal and smart for Minnesota this season? Oh uh, yeah. I, I mean, I, I personally think so. Um, I also think that's just the best way to play basketball at any level, but um, I, I think they have the personnel to do that because Frank Mitchell is very much, he can get up and down the court. He's a really good athlete um, and kind of that rim running type of big, like he's not going to step out and take much jump shots. Um, but Dawson Garcia has the versatility to defend multiple positions. And I think Frank Mitchell will have the versatility to switch on ball screens. So, um, I, I think they need to lean on that. I think this team has a lot of good athletes. Femi Odakal is a very good athlete. Um, the guards have a unique skill set that they're not necessarily like probably the fastest players with the ball in their hands. Lakai Patterson and Tyler Cochran are definitely kind of like you mentioned, those stocky guards that are good on ball defenders. They're not going to be Elijah Hawkins, so to speak, that they're making these like ridiculous passes and – running up and down the court, but they're, they're obviously power. I, I think they're big 10 talent level guards yeah. that they're going to be able to hold their own. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be interesting what they decide to do. Cause this is a big year for uh, Ben Johnson. And I mean, my disappointment with their non-conference schedule um, is pretty high because their margin for error is incredibly slim. If they, lose more than two games in the non-conference. I don't really see a path for this team to make the NCAA tournament, which is frustrating, but um, they're going to have to figure it out because uh, this is now year four of the Ben Johnson era. Um, he was – they made a run to the NIT last year, and there was a lot of things to like, but it's a very different team now, so it'll be interesting to see how they approach things. Well, Tony, thank you so much for – providing insight and color around this roster. It's going to, it's a wide open big 10, right. With, with Zach Eady gone and new schools coming in and the travels new, like it, it's going to be really tight, I think, but I think this team is totally in play uh, to be really good offensively, ha, you know, be something different than a lot of these teams and, and win, you know, 12 or so games in the big 10. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, good luck with everything this season and uh, go Gophers. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me.